Today we are at Hostreiter Industries, as you can see from the logo behind me, but what's behind the logo? How about a second generation family, a father that started the company in 1988 in a basement and stayed in that basement until 2016, enjoyed being a smaller company, let his three sons kind of wander about and figure out where their passions lied. Well, guess what? All three sons came back. They grew the company. We're now standing in 43,000 square feet, whole bunch of machines, 28 employees, and they acquired across the street a little bit more land, so it's now 100,000 square feet. They've applied datanomics into the facility. When you're growing this quickly, you have to know of what's going on in the machines, in the facilities, and keep those co-workers and employees motivated. So let's step inside, let's talk to Kylan and figure out what's going on here at Hostreiter Industries. Well, we've made it inside to Hostreiter and I'm with my buddy Kylan here. We're gonna talk about well, a lot of subjects because he's invested, as, as you can see, as Matt Sura. We got Akuma around the corner. We got Miltronics over here, a company that continues to grow and invest. Three brothers. I mean, it's truly fascinating what's being done here at Hastreiter when we think about 2016 to now, jumping from a basement into 43,000 square feet, and the technology continues to grow here. So. They make a lot of secret parts. I don't know how many parts I can show you today with Kylan, but we also have a technology called Datanomics that we want to discuss today. And how many times do you guys out there hear the successes of people? Oh, I'm bragging, Kylan. I'm so good. Look at what we've done. We're doing an amazing job. But there's a lot of frustration that comes before mm -hmm. success, isn't there? Kylan, I want to hear about some of that frustration because that is how we connect with an audience out there that's going through exactly what you went through and some of those struggles when you were diving into machine monitoring back in 2020. Yeah, so uh, what I want to start with first is even why we were looking at machine monitoring in the first place. And so when we look at our ERP system where we're clocking into jobs or clocking out of jobs, or if we quote a job off of a certain amount of time, we know how long the job took, but we had no visibility of what actually happened during that job. So if a job went really good or really bad, what actually was going on during that time period? You got the story from the operator, which is great, but that's only uh, part of it, right? You got the, uh, the qualitative data, but not the quantitative data. So we started looking in 2020 into machine monitoring systems to give us that missing visibility. And we, uh, we brought in a company, we, we evaluated a couple different ones that were some of a lot of the big names and picked one to do an on-site demo. And you know, sometimes what looks really good on the outside isn't necessarily what is actually on the inside and the experience. And some of those issues that we ran into, if we would have just started with Datanomics, we never even would have known that those are even potential issues to have in the first place. Right. right? Which is a good spot where we're at now, but uh, we had to go through some learning back then. Um, and so we even took a two year hiatus between the first demo and on site to where we actually brought in Datanomics to kind of catch our breath. So what we saw with uh, that machine monitoring system is going through kind of the generations of it, if I could say it that way, because Datanomics is kind of the latest generation and, and arguably, say, yeah. you know, the, um, you know, and we've really reaped the benefits of that. Um, but that first generation is really that traditional operator input, tell me why the machine's not running, you know, so that uh, you know, upper management can scrape data and see what's happening on the shop floor. And then that kind of that next iteration where we tried to jump in at was kind of that, uh, hey, we're gonna take machine monitoring, but then we're going to also be like a BI or business information system. So you've got your ERP data, you've got your data out of uh, like HiQA, which is our quality software where we blueprints and you know, and then we have SPC data. And so you got your machine monitoring platform and we're gonna suck in all this data and we're gonna be okay at machine monitoring, but then we're going to be, we're gonna to attempt to be a BI and suck in all this data, and it just didn't quite work because you're trying to do too much in one platform. And what we saw with that was a couple issues. The first is um, you would have, you know, MT Connect on all these machines and all the data was tagged completely different from even the same brand, mm -hmm. right? And so now we've got this, you know, machine monitoring kind of BI system and I have to build out my own dashboards, I have to build out my own reports because nothing's out of the box or what is out of the box wasn't really designed for us, right? And those, you know, the, those dashboards, so now you're creating a dashboard and okay, this machine's data is tagged like this and then this machine's data is tagged like this and now, 
you know, it's all named different and now I'm trying to create dashboards and it was just very challenging, right? So not only do I have to be my own data analyst, I have to be, you know, the data engineer to actually even create the whole system, even though I'm paying these guys to create the system for me. And so it's just very- Seems like a messy cycle of- It was, it was. And, you know, the, the other challenge we saw with that is, you know, so that whole kind of second generation, I'll call it second generation, that's just my own term. As we're growing through this, right? Yeah, is um, um, that, that BI system just wasn't strong, it just wasn't there. Everything being customizable, 100% customizable, seemed great, but it just really wasn't. It was lacking, because it didn't layer the data to who it was relevant to. It was just kind of spitballing all the data out there. Um, the second, or the third issue that we saw was with that operator input data, right? So what it is is, you know, you, you, so you want us to put a, you know, these tablets at the machines, which we already have tablets, so why do I need a second tablet? Right. Um, depending upon which brand you go with, uh, which you can see at the machines, is we have to have the operator put in reason codes for why the machine's not running, which you, th you know, which it makes sense why you want that data, right? But we discovered that it wasn't a smart system. And the reason why is what happens is, you know, you're, you're basically pulling the operator away from running the machine so that they can tell you why the machine's not running, which is completely counter backwards to what you actually want the operator to do. Right. And then the second issue with that is once you actually have that data, right, it's not the best data. And the reason is, is you will overwhelm your operator with trying to put in reason codes. So, hey, every 30 seconds, tell me why the machine's not running, right? So then you get to the point where like, okay, if the machine hasn't been running for more than five minutes, tell me why the machine's not running. So all of a sudden what happens now is all the data, for example, underneath five minutes, completely irrelevant, right? But if you've got, let's just say a two minute cycle time and you should have 20 seconds between parts and you got four minutes all of a sudden between parts, no one's gonna notice. Right. And even if you had six minutes between the parts, that's gonna, you're gonna get the results when management finally gets around to looking at the data, mining the data, after you've already run the job to come back. And you can't fix what's already been in the past, right? And so, um, you know, so that system to me just wasn't functional because even the upper management that has to mine the data, you don't have the time for it. So now you're putting in a system that is happening after the fact, you're missing the key opportunities for improvement and you don't have the time to do this anyways. So now you have to manage the system that you wanted to be able to manage itself. And so what we did then is we took that couple year hiatus and said, we're just gonna take a break from this because this whole, this whole system just doesn't seem to be the best solution. And I'm concerned about putting in what the best solution is for application. Um, and cause you just, you don't grow and get to where you wanna be without having a vision. And no, Kylan, I completely agree with all of that. You're connecting with an audience right now, I guarantee you, because we're going to ready to move into the success of what's been done with yep. Datanomics, I know. So that's why I kind of want to step in and go, look, firstly, I know some people with a beautiful outside, not so good of an inside either, so I connected with you there. <laughs> On top of that, we're talking about the growth that you've had since 2016, and we want to trust every single one of our coworkers. Mm -hmm. You have about 28 or more people here right yep. now. So the information you're receiving, yep. we hope that everything is the right. truth, but Mondays and Fridays, I'm not always the most honest if I'm feeling mm -hmm. a little bit lazy, and this allows us to truly see. Now, the reason I bring these things up is because we're connected. I guarantee you people on the other side of that camera right now are shaking their head going, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Kylan, that's me too, mm-hmm. <laughs> I went through that same struggle. I want to know more. So mm -hmm. now that you've brought Datanomics on board, now that yeah. we've kind of shared some of the situations where you saw some imperfections that you knew you could increase. The fact that mm -hmm. you're growing so exponentially mm -hmm. right now from where you've come, your three brothers and family, this is all important. One of my mm -hmm. favorite parts is when you said, I needed to buy a new machine, or I thought so, and then I learned I might could be mm -hmm. more productive, but I'm not gonna steal your thunder today. Yeah. Let's talk about what Datanomics has brought you that you hoped for, that yep. you knew was coming, and what you've achieved yep. since then. Yeah. So. So to, to back up just a little bit, so the company started in 1988. Mm -hmm. My dad was happy to be small for most of these years, four CNC machines up until 2016 to where we're at, where we're at 18, 19. We have a Matsura MX330 PC10 coming in in, uh, in uh, two weeks here. And, uh, you know, and so you get to the point where, uh, you know, when you got four machines, you know, yes, you're gonna have value with machine monitoring, but you know, when you're at 18, 19, 20, it's a whole different level of, uh, of value 
because of just the scale of where you're at. And if you want to keep growing, you want to keep adding, you got to position yourself for that continued growth, right? And so when we looked at, uh, at Datanomics, it was that, you know, we have the beautiful data coming out of the ERP, right? Mm -hmm. So we know how long jobs are taken, we know which are the winners, which are the losers, right? But when it comes to the data of what's happening within that job, you know, you're missing that, okay? You know, one example is, you know, so when you get a router, and, you know, so we want that ERP data to be able to requote jobs, to sure. be accurate, to be profitable, right? And so that operator puts their cycle time on the piece of paper, says, hey, this was my cycle time, right? 100% of your cycle times is not that time, right? It's not. That's great. Right? You're gonna say, hey, 30% of my cycle time is, you know, 30% of my, you know, parts were this much cycle time, 20% were this much time, this much time, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so what we're getting out of the machine monitoring is a level of accuracy and granularity that you just, couldn't pay somebody enough to go and get, right? Because if you've got 20 machines, 50 machines, 100 machines, how do you send somebody around with a stopwatch to time every, every single, single tool? Every single tool, every single cycle time. And even if you did capture the cycle, you're capturing one data point on that cycle time. Whereas the machine is, the machine monitor is scraping all that data out completely automatically, right? But what we found was the value is that that data was being live to the right people at the right time. And I think that's one of the most important parts, right? And the example is, all right, so when you look at uh, an operator on the floor, right? Everybody wants to live up to expectations. They just need to know what the expectations are, right? And so the first time I turned on that TV by the Matsuras here, and I, I grabbed the guys and brought them over to here to like, hey, here's the TV, this is what it is, this is Datanomics. And, and, uh, and it had already been collecting data before the TV was on, right? And there is about this much yellow, eh, it's about this much yellow time between parts. And, and I told the guys, like, when you look at this TV screen, everything is editable and customizable, right? Because what motivates you is gonna be different than the next guy. So if you wanna see, you know, your, your parts per hour and how many parts you could have made in that time, you can put that on. If you wanna see what your spindle utilization is, you wanna see, you can basically edit that, right? And you can see some of the variables that we have on our TV there. Um, and so when I came back, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half later, there was like that much yellow time between parts, right? All it's I did was already all, improving. All I did was turn the TV on, explained it, and was just like, "Here's one more tool, <clears throat> so that you can see what your machine is doing to give you feedback." And so now, instead of you know management having to sit up somewhere, mine the data, make like thoughts and decisions, and come back and say, "Do it like this," it was just putting the tools in the hand of the operator to make themselves better. Kylan, what? The we're not done here yet. We, we have, that was a mic drop moment, but these things are expensive, Kylan. Thank you for coming back. That to me is so important to understand because I do believe that the majority of us out there want to be the best versions of ourselves we mm -hmm. can be, Absolutely. but we don't Absolutely. know what those expectations are. So what you just described to me for the mm -hmm. audience, for everyone watching, that's a gold mine. Mm -hmm. Now, on top of the improvement of what you saw mm -hmm. in somebody just wanting to do better yeah. for themselves. You also saw a, a cycle, a mm -hmm. wavelength, let's say, yeah. of productivity going up in some places on some machines, productivity kind of going down in some mm -hmm. places on some machines. Would you mind describing the yeah. knowledge that you gained yep. from that as well? Yep. You know, so, so what I described there was that data automatically coming out to the operator and they being able to make decisions off of that without having to mine the data, look for the data, get the data, it's just boom, it's there, right? And it's the same thing for the, you know, for the managers and more of that C-suite level. At the C-suite level, uh, I had one example of, uh, so it would have been, so we got these Matsuras in uh, summer of 2021. And so in late 2022, guys were coming to me and saying, hey, we need another Matsura, right? Because they're fantastic, they're very productive machines. And so I got into Datanomics, I looked at the data, and I saw a fairly strong inverse relationship between the spindle utilization of both the machines. Um, so we name all of our machines, so this is Adam and Eve. So Adam and Eve, because uh, it's the first machines we ever got in a pair, and it was the first machines in uh, this section of the building. So a little symbolic there. Fun. Very symbolic. Um, and so, so when I was looking at that data where there's an inverse relationship in the machine's usage, it was like, we don't need another machine, I just need to train another person to get on the Matsuras, right? And, you know, so then we basically took somebody from another part of the shop, got them trained up on the Matsuras, and then took another person from a different part of the shop, trained them into that position, and kind of backfilled at a more a lower entry level position. And so now, 
fast forward to 2023. Now we actually genuinely do need another machine. <laughs> and that's what we've got coming in. Kylan, I want to ask you a question that I think often the audience thinks about as well. Mm. And that's, there's a belief out there that I can figure out this information on my own, or maybe it doesn't take enough time, or this information being mm -hmm. provided is, is redundant. I, I know what my machines are doing already. I know what my operators are doing already. And those of us who are believers in this, I know it's cliche, but mm -hmm. 4.0 type of situation yeah. of ERP, machine monitoring, quoting parts, all that stuff. Some of us who are believers in that, we believe that it would either be almost infinitely long before we could gather the same information, mm -hmm. or if ever to yep. gather this information, yep. not including even the motivation you mentioned yep. that might not even be there. There's other, And let me get to the point of what I'm trying to ask you is, do you believe that you could do this without machine monitoring? These questions that you had, these answers that you've been provided, mm -hmm. the struggle that you had a few years ago to what you've learned from datanomics, could you have done that on your own? Would it have taken longer? Would it have been impossible? I really, the message I want to convey to everyone watching right now, because there's so many skeptical people about getting mm -hmm. into it, is to just say, well, whatever the truth is, we always want the truth, but yeah. ju to just say, yes, this does work, Yes, I do need it. Whatever that might be, mm -hmm. that's the message I want to try to yep. convey in this moment. Yep. You know, and what I would say is, I mean, let, let me put it this way. You could take a five axis part, the three test two machining, and you can make that on a manual mill. The good people could. Right, right. right. <laughs> so can you get a lot of this data? Sort of. Can you make that part on a manual mill? Depending on the part, yes. But is it going to be efficient? Is it going to be productive? Is that how you're going to make the most money? Right? So when we're looking at then at, at, at datanomics, right? If I take 18, 19 machines, right? I could throw our CMMs in there too, right? And getting them hooked up. And I get a 10% productivity boost out of them. That's another two machines, right? And how much money did I just spend to get two more machines? All right? That's mm. just one little example, mm. right? And so it's, you can always, when you got good people, you can always do a lot with less, but you're not going to, it, it, takes, it takes a whole nother level of car to run a NASCAR race, so to speak, right? And so, you know, depending upon where your vision is, where you want to go, what you want your margins to be, um, how much time and effort do you want to be able to put in with your own time to, 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 to get data like that? And even if you do, it's not going to be to the granularity and ability that we have here you're gonna be missing some kind of opportunity, right? And the reality is, is that, you know, there's a reason why those manual machines are going away. They're still good for certain applications, right? But that's the second industrial revolution, right? You're sitting with a third here and people are moving on to the fourth, right? So at some point, you have to be able to make the decision of what you want your company to look like, where you want to be 20 years from now, 40 years from now. If you look at what it was like 40 years now, 40 years back in industry, imagine what it's gonna look like 40 years from now. And are you positioning yourself to be in a position to take full advantage of that future? Kylan, please don't drop my microphone again, <laughs> but that was another mic drop moment. Kylan, thank you so much for your time today. Truly some information that we've never mm -hmm. had the opportunity to express before on the MTD channel. I look forward to hopefully having the honor of mm -hmm. you joining me on the Gun Show podcast at some Absolutely. point. Would you do me that honor? Absolutely. Thank you so much, my friends. Yep. Thank you all for watching. I'm going to step outside mm -hmm. now, and I'll see you in just a minute. Wow, what a profound conversation by Kylan. I mean, when we're talking about helping people understand where and how machine monitoring can work, connecting with an audience of where some of those same frustrations are going about and, and seeing the youth of manufacturing really step forward and make themselves known. That in itself is absolutely incredible. Hostriker Industries, can you guys see that H over there? It's kind of an H with an I. What does that mean? Well, talking with Kylan, it's because we're coming together and we can all do this together. Bring manufacturing back, bring the trades back, get people excited once again. We will all see you again soon. Thank you so much for joining MTD CNC in this incredible story, not just about machine monitoring, but about Hostreiter Industries and the complete growth of a family organization.